Today I'm teaching you how to do this beautiful natural glam, especially for the mature woman. Keep watching. <laughs> guys first things first we're going to start off with primer but before i even start off with primer i always like to hydrate my lips with a lip balm it doesn't matter what type of lip balm you use just as long as you use one because it's going to help your lip liner go on much easier at the end also i have already done my skincare and i will do another video later about skincare, but I've already done my skincare. I've already done my moisturizer. So the very first thing I'm going to do is start with primer. Now, what is the purpose of primer? Primer goes on, first of all, after your moisturizer, before your foundation. And it's designed to create that barrier between your skin and your foundation so that your foundation will last longer on your skin. Also, if you happen to have large pores, fine lines, it acts as a filler. Now, there are many types of primers. I am a dry girl. I am more normal in the summer, but I am normal to dry in the summer, but I'm definitely dry in the winter time. So I use a hydrating primer. So it kind of feels like a moisturizer, but it is that barrier, that base, that is priming my skin and preparing my skin for the foundation. Then there are primers that are matte for you ladies that are definitely oily. Maybe even if you're just oily in the T-zone, you can just use the primer just in the T-zone area. Um, and then there is just a, a basic primer that anyone can use. So I tend to go with a hydrating primer for my skin and that's what I'm gonna use today. I actually have two here today. I just wanted to show you First, I have this Laura Mercier primer. This is the hydrating primer that I use on a normal basis. But another wonderful primer is by Milk. It is a matte primer. And so if you are more oily, then you're going to just use it in your T-zone area, usually around the nose and the chin. These are usually the areas that you get a, a little bit more oily. Or if you're oily all over, then you would use it all over. So... Just a pea size amount is what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use my fingers to apply, rubbing it together, starting in the center of my face because that is the area that the makeup tends to fade away the fastest, and then rubbing it out on the rest of my face. And usually what's wonderful about a primer is that you can even see from just the application, how nice it is, how it's already smoothed out the skin, and I can definitely tell. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and do my brows. I am not a big brow perfection type of girl. I do like to do my brows first before my makeup, but I don't spend a whole lot of time because I can really perfect it with my foundation and with my concealer. So the main thing though that I do use is this product, it's by Maybelline and it's called Super Slick. And I love this because if you do have longer hairs, it does lay your brows down nicely. And so I like to use that first. So I had already put some of that on prior to starting the video. And so as you can see, my brows are nicely laid. I've kind of just brushed them up and out a little bit because that's the way they naturally grow, but they are definitely going to stay in place. So what I'm going to use to fill in my brow is by Benefit and it's called Precisely My Brow Pencil. And what I love about it is that it has a brush on one end and then it has a fine tip pencil on the other other end and you just roll it up and you use it from there i love this because it you can really just define your brow really good it's very effortless it doesn't come off very heavy at all and it's just like the perfect brow pencil i have used this for years and i will never change the number i'm using is 4.5 so i'm going to use that now but before i do that because I have put moisturizer on, because I have put primer on, my skin it has a little bit of a slip to it. So what I'm gonna do just on my brows right now, 
I'm going to use a brush like this. This is by Real Technique. It is a concealer brush and I'm going to tap it into my loose powder and I'm going to just rub it over my brow. Because if I try to go in right now with that pencil and put it on, it's just going to glide and slide and it's not going to stick. So that's why I'm putting a little powder over that brow, over the skin, so that now when I go in to apply, it has something to adhere to. So I'm going to go ahead and fill my brows in. I like to start at the bottom first using short strokes and bringing it out. And then I go ahead and I do the other side because I just like to see that it's even from the very beginning. And that looks good. Then I like to start at the top, right probably at the highest point, And I begin to outline there. And as you see, I have no hairs here. So I just create an outline and I bring it around until it reaches the end of the bottom line. And then I began to fill it in from the back and move my way forward. Again, I'm using just little short strokes. And if you ever fill it in and it ever seems like it's too, too much, too heavy, you're just going to simply use the brush on the other end and brush it out to soften it up. Now I'm going to do the other side. Starting halfway in, going to the highest point, and then outlining and bringing it down to meet the bottom line. Now I'm going to fill it in, starting at the tip. And don't worry that they're not perfect because your eyes are different. They are cousins or they're sisters, but they're not twins. That's like the old saying we used to say when we worked in retail beauty. They're sisters, but they're not twins. So you have to stop, take a look. Does it look even? What needs to be done? And I see this has more of a point than this one. So I'm just gonna go in and make an adjustment here so that it's as even as possible. And then I see that it's a little strong on the front. So I'm taking the other end of the brush and I'm just brushing it so that it looks more natural and softer. And that looks really good to me. I'm going to go in a little closer and make sure I don't see any harsh lines. And there we are. Next, moving on to foundation. Foundation is very similar, almost like your primer. You're going to choose the foundation according to your skin type. And if you don't know your skin type, just once you wash your face in the morning, by the end of the day, just look at your face and determine, are you oily as the day goes on? Are you still dry? Do you still look pretty normal? That's how you're going to tell. If you still can't tell, you can always go into any Sephora. I, I prefer Sephora over Ulta because they're great at giving samples, but they will also guide you into helping you discover what your skin type is. But you're going to choose a foundation like how you choose your primer. So if you're dry, you're going to choose a foundation that is more hydrating. If you are more normal, then you can kind of go either way. It just kind of depends on what type of finish you like. And of course, if you're oily, you're going to want something that has um, a little bit of oil control in it, or that is more of a matte or semi matte finish. I particularly for my skin, again, because I'm dry, I like to use a more hydrating foundation, especially in the winter time. But when I'm really trying to get super glam, I do use a more full coverage, semi matte foundation, not super matte, but just kind of a full, well, I guess you could say it would be matte foundation when I know I really want my makeup to last all day and I just want this really flawless look, then that's when I would use more of a matte foundation. As far as the different tools that you can use, you can use a brush, you can use a beauty blender. I actually have two. This is an actual beauty blender that I use. You can buy this at any Ulta. You can buy this online at, so at Amazon. And by the way, everything will be linked below. So if I don't quite mention what it is, I will have a link below or you can, and this is about 20 bucks if I didn't say, whereas this is a pack of maybe 10, I think I bought. And I love them because they come in like brown tones. 
tan tone so they're like darker like my skin tone so i really like them but they're not as soft as the beauty blender but it works just as well but in any case you always want to dampen your blenders because you want to because of our age because we want a soft we want a dewy look we want a natural look what this damp sponge will do is to soften up any foundation that you have. And even if you went in with a full coverage foundation, matte foundation, once you fully applied it and you go back and you can pat this all over the face, it will really soften that look up and give you that glow that you're looking for now that your skin is a little bit more mature. So I am going to actually use both. I'm going to use a blender on one side and I'm going to use a foundation brush. Brush. This foundation brush is by Mac. It's Mac 1, it's Fat Mac 170. And the way that you know that it's a foundation brush because the bristles are very tight, it's very dense. So it's designed to give you a nice full coverage when you are applying your foundation. The foundation that I'm going to use today, I'm going to show you my two favorite, but the foundation I'm going to use today is by Maybelline. Maybelline Fit Me because it's a very hydrating foundation. And again, because we are going into the winter months and it's a little colder, but when I really want that flawless look, I love this Too Faced Born This Way Matte Foundation. Now, I'm going to give you guys a really good pro tip. If you are the type that really likes your skin to glow, okay, really love that glowy, dewy finish, there is a product that you can use before your foundation. So it's going to be after your primer. And it's just a very, it's a sheer illuminator. Now, my girls who are oily, this, you're going to skip this step. You're gonna go right to your foundation. But for my ladies that like that glow, this is a wonderful product. It's by Giorgio Armani. It's called Fluid Sheer. And you can already see that it has a little bit of shimmer to it. But this on your face, First, prior to your foundation, is chef's kiss. It's just gonna make your skin glow. So I'm gonna do a little of it now so you can see what it will look like. And again, my oily girls, you're gonna skip this part, okay? One pump will be sufficient and that's all you need. You're gonna rub it together. I like to focus on the center of my face and on my forehead, down the bridge of my nose. You can already see what a beautiful glow that this gives. And you see it isn't too much. It's just enough. Really, really pretty in the summertime when you're tan. Your skin is even because you've laid out in the sun and then you just put this on. Girl, bye. It's so beautiful. You will absolutely love it. Okay, now we're going to go in with the foundation. And I'm gonna put some of this Fit Me just on the back of my hand and I'm gonna apply it with my finger, okay? I'm gonna spot treat my face with my finger, not, not gonna apply it with my sponge, I'm not gonna apply it with my brush because I want all of this makeup on my skin. The sponge is gonna absorb some of the pigment, the brush is gonna absorb some of the pigment and I don't want that to happen. So I'm just putting a little bit on the back of my hand and I'm just tapping it all over my face. Make sure you just have some Kleenex nearby to wipe off any excess on your hand. And as you can see, I'm avoiding the under eye area. I don't want it underneath my eye because our concealer will take care of that. I'm grabbing a little bit more to put above my lip area. The other reason I like to do it this way is because it, allow, it gives it time to kind of on my face. And the longer something sits on the face, the better the adheres to the skin. So that is why I kind of put it on and let it sit as I get it on all over. And now I'm gonna go in with my brush. I'm gonna do a just kind of pad or a stippling motion because I want to press this foundation into my skin. I like to work in sections. So I like to do one side of the face first and then work my way to the other side. Remember, if it's not enough, you can always go back and put more. It's always best to start off with just a little bit 
and then you can always build it. I completely forgot. I did say I was gonna do one side with the brush and one side with the sponge. So we're gonna pretend, right? So I did this side. And so if you were to use your beauty blender, you're gonna use the fat part and you're gonna just tap it in, okay? How about that? And that looks great. Skin looks even, skin looks dewy, skin looks healthy, and that's what we want at this age. The next thing we're gonna use is our concealer. Concealers are great. Um, it does so many things. First of all, it's going to conceal, but it's also going to highlight. So as you put your foundation on, though it's evened out your skin, it makes your face look completely flat. You don't see the natural shadows and highlighted areas that you normally would see without your foundation. So now you've got to bring those highlights back and you want to highlight the area where as where like naturally hits your face. So right now you can see that there's light hitting me here, a little bit around the nose, and there's light hitting me here. The shadows are here on the side and we'll address that later with contour, but that is where you want to conceal. And I have used so many concealers, but what has been my tried and true is this LA Pro Concealer, you guys. It's so wonderful because it comes in so many shades. It gives a like to full coverage. Um, if you're oily, you probably will like this a little bit more. Um, I just, I truly love this, but I'm also going to try today for the first time Born This Way Sculpting Concealer by Too Faced. Since I figured, you know what, since I already used the foundation, let me try the, conce the concealer because so many people speak so highly of this as well. I already know that it's gonna give me a medium to full coverage, but the difference between this one and this one is that this one is a little bit creamier. So I'm really, really excited to use this. So I'm gonna go in with this. What's nice about it is that it has a one tip applicator and I'm going to go ahead and highlight all the areas first. Then I will come back and I will contour and then we will start to blend. So I like to start right here because this line that I'm drawing here is going to help with the contour of my nose. So it's already giving me um, Low, it's already giving me the definition that I need when I get ready to go in and contour the nose. So the trick with concealer is that you don't need a lot. And I'm already seeing because how creamy this is, I certainly do not need a lot. So just a little bit there. I'm going to do some here on the other side here and then down the forehead, down the center of the nose, a little bit here and on the chin okay we'll do a separate video as far as trying to figure out the right tones of your foundation the right tones of your concealer um i have warm undertones but i'm kind of neutral i can go either way honestly i can go cool or warm but i am warmer in the winter time which is why you can see with this um that it is a warmer tone and by the way, when you are picking out your concealer, you wanna go two to three shades lighter than your foundation. This is clearly three shades lighter than my foundation, but I absolutely love it. Um, that is the rule of thumb, okay? With blending out, blending out your concealer, you can either use a brush or you can use your beauty blender. This brush is by Morphe. It's brush M335. And it's actually like a um, foundation brush. It's very dense, right? The bristles are tight, so it's great for blending out. Um, I am this time going to use the brush on one side and then I'll use the beauty blender on the other side. So I'm gonna actually start with, um, I'm gonna use actually the brush for the center of my face and then I will blend out my concealer last. So you wanna do the same type of stippling motion that you did with the foundation brush and you just, just keep it right there in the center. You want to also tap out 
the highlight down the nose and then the chin. Okay. The trick with getting that good concealer, good coverage is if you've noticed, I've saved my under eye for last. The longer you let your concealer set, the better coverage you will get. So this is probably set about one or two minutes and that's usually all you need. And then you want to start blending out from the bottom and then you want to connect it all. Okay. I'm starting at the bottom. I'm starting at the edge and I'm bringing it now to connect. Yeah. You can definitely see that this a little bit goes a long way, which is great, which means you won't have to buy concealer anytime soon. How far do you bring out your concealer? Well, it depends on the shape of your face. If you have a fuller face, then you would want to bring it, I'm sorry, if you have a slimmer face, you will want your face to look a little wider so you will bring it out a little wide whereas if you have a fuller face you would keep it more so you wouldn't extend it out you would just stop it right at the end of the eye if you have a face that is um, a little bit fuller you notice that i am not rubbing i'm patting it in i, for I forgot again to use the sponge oh my god looks really good so while we're here we're going to go ahead and use a little bit of the concealer and we're going to go ahead and work on our brows so what i like to do is i like to use an angle brush like this this is by mac it's number oh wow it's all written off 253 but i will again put it in the description and i'm going to take a little bit of this concealer and put it on my brush and i'm going to take it up underneath my brow to give it a very clean look. So I'm gonna come a little closer and the angle brush just gives you the precision that you need to make sure that you're placing it in the right area. Then I'm bringing, I'm dragging it down. Then I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. So guys, here is when I discovered that my mic is no longer on. And so now I'm going to do a voice over for the rest of this video. So now I want you to grab your concealer brush and I promise to link everything on the bottom. Blend that concealer down until it's very phased out where you can't really tell where it starts or ends and then you're going to take your concealer and dab a little bit more right on the lid you're going to then take that same concealer brush blend it out until it's all even you can even use a little bit around the other area of the eye where you've already placed concealer and now what you're doing is that you're setting your eyes up so that the color that we use will show very very nicely so now we're about to go into contour this is my favorite contour stick it's by juvia's place but i also like to use black opal but you're going to start at the top of your ear and you're going to bring it down just a little bit and stop like at where your brows end you're going to also add a little bit to your forehead because we want those foreheads a little smaller if it's big like mine you want to minimize it some you're going to take a little bit go down the side of your nose and then you're going to use your beauty blender you're going to use the beauty blender because it's going to blend it out very, very nicely. You're just going to tap it. You're not going to rub it. You're going to probably lift it a little bit toward the eye area, but do not rub it, please. And then for the forehead, you're going to blend it back into the hairline only where you've placed it. See how beautifully that's blended? You're gonna do the same thing on the other side, blending it back into your hairline. Now you're gonna take an angle contour brush that I love by Morphe, and this is what you're going to use to blend out the contour on your nose. Because it has an angle, it just fits perfectly in that area. You're gonna start at the brow, you're gonna bring it straight down, and you're gonna do that on each side. Once you're complete with that and you feel like it's nice and even, go back, take your beauty blender, and just press it in. Again, this is going to blend it soften it up in case you've just added too much makeup and it's going to make it look seamless and very very natural 
Make sure you squeeze the side of your beauty blender. That's a good tip so that you can get a good angle in blending that contour out. Then you're gonna go back and get your foundation brush and blend the edges of where you've put your highlight and where you've put your contour so that again, everything will look seamless. Now we're gonna go into setting. Now this is key. I do not use a loose powder on mature skin. I use these Sephora pressed powders because they have a little bit of mica in it. And then I use these great triangle sponges that I get from Amazon. I will link it all below. But I have two different colors. I have a lighter one for the highlighted areas and then I have a darker one for the rest of my face. So you're going to tap in that lighter one and then just tap it lightly underneath the eye. You're gonna also tap it on the forehead, underneath the nose and the chin. Every place that you've highlighted and you've used your concealer, that's where you're gonna use it. See how beautifully the side looks that I've done compared to the other side. It just really looks airbrushed and it looks perfect. You're gonna also add a little bit over your lids because remember you did put concealer there. So we want that area to be matte as well. Now we're gonna get into the bronzer and the bronzer is what you're gonna use to set that contour. I use either one. I use one by Fenty and I use one by Black Radiance. I use an angle contour brush and I just tap into my bronzer and then I tap in the area that I've used the contour. This is what's going to set that cream contour that you've applied all over the face. Remember, you cannot go about your day without setting all of these creamy products on your face first because trust me, your makeup will be sliding all day long, boo. Next, you're going to grab an eyeshadow brush, a fluffy brush. I will link it below. And you're going to use that to set the contour on the side of the nose. You obviously need a smaller tool for this. Now you're going to go back, grab that second color of this pressed powder by Sephora. You're going to use a large powder brush. And now you're going to tap this on the rest of the face that you have not set. Because remember, you've only set the contour, you've only set the highlighted areas. Now the other places need to be set as well. And girl, I'm looking real cute, real cute. Okay, now you're gonna also go in and use that same brush. Use the bronzer, guys. This is the trick to that natural look, and that's gonna be your eyeshadow. You're gonna start closest to your nose. You're going to blend it out very, very softly. And I promise this is a gorgeous, elevated look and technique to getting a natural makeup look especially for mature skin. Honestly, the look works for anyone, but I really, really love this for us. I'm cute. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna be going into blush now, and I love Juvia's Place, and you obviously see that's my favorite color, but I'm using a blush brush, and I'm just tapping it a little bit above where I've put my contour right it has a beautiful glow it has a slight pink undertone to it i'm going back with my puff and i'm tapping it on top because it's going to make it all be seamless together now i'm using urban decay black waterproof liner to line my lash line you basically want to feel like you're going into your eye right that's when you know you've placed that liner in the perfect spot then we're going to go in with Perversion Mascara Black, also by Urban Decay. And ladies, when you do your mascara, lift that eye all the way up, right? Lift it up so you can get it from the root and pull it to the tips of your lashes. Do not pump your mascara. You're pumping air in and it's gonna cause it to dry out. I need you to swirl it, right? When you need more makeup on that brush. 
Now we're going to go in and do the other eye. Now I am a lash girl. I'm doing this for you ladies who don't necessarily want to wear lashes, but I'm going to put some lashes on later. Now underneath, do not be using black eyeliner unless you're going to a black tie affair. Use brown, burgundy, uh, soft green, anything underneath the eye. See how beautiful that looks as opposed to a black. The black makes the eye look harsh and it pulls the eye down sometimes. But I think for an elevated look, for a natural look in your makeup, brown is ideal for underneath the eye. As I said, I'm going to put on some lashes because I am a lash girl, but I love it because look how it really just opens up my eye. Now we're going to go into lips and I'm using an NYX lip liner. We all know about chestnut, but I love this one. It's called Espresso and it just gives the perfect brown now i'm also using oh can't remember but this is a matte soft pink liquid lipstick and the key to this is just to let it dry don't rub it together yet give it one or two minutes let it dry then pat pat together and now here take a small eyeshadow brush and blend your lip liner into that lip color that's how you get that nice graduated um, gradient look to your lip color. Now I'm using Pat McGrath. I love, love, love her lip glosses. And this is just going to go on all over. Once you apply it to the top, do not rub together, ladies. Put on a fresh coat on the bottom as well. And this is a beautiful, beautiful natural lip color that will go with anything you decide to wear. Now the last step, we're going to set with this one step setting spray that I love. I promise you, this literally makes your makeup last for 24 hours. I love it. And I hope you love this look too. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I, again, I'm so sorry about the audio, but I am loving this look and I need you guys to subscribe, please. If you love this type of thing, if you're over 40, you want to elevate your look, you're trying to just elevate your life, boo, please subscribe. Thank you.